I'm going to give you some tips on using Ableton's vocoder instrument and uh, how to make a good carrier signal. Now the carrier signal is the signal that the vocoder uses to synthesize with, with a voice. So if the carrier signal is crappy, then your results are probably going to be crappy as well. I'll go ahead and walk you through. I'm just using Ableton's operator to make the carrier signal. And then I've got a, um, a setup here that I created with the vocoder. Let's start with the carrier signal. So I'll just take this one at a time here. So I start with, I'm going to turn all these down here so you can kind of hear the process. Okay, so what I start with here is I'm using an, an FM synthesis approach here. So you'll want to use this here, which means that each one of these oscillators is feeding into the next, feeding into the next, feeding into the next. So the first three oscillators I've got are uh, square waves, and I'm using square 16. I find that that gives a better result. I use a square 8 on the second one, square 8 on the third one, and then I use a, a sine wave. So let me just kind of walk you through how the sound progresses. So the first sound you'll hear, oh, let me turn off the filter notch as well. Okay, so that's the starting sound. And then uh, when we mix in the second sound, we'll hear it get thicker. brings out a lot more uh, frequencies and it just has a, a hardness to it. And then uh, I add another square wave. And I like it around there. And then lastly, that is uh, modulated through a sine wave. Okay, so that's the start of our sound. Now the next thing I want to do is add some saturator and I'm also going to uh, turn on the notch filter. And I, I put a 24 dB notch filter at about 1 dB. And you'll notice that I also do, um, I cut out that 1 dB here as well. For me, I, I feel it sounds better that way. But I made this macro setup so that you could tweak it however you want. But let's get some, uh, here's the difference here. I kind of like the warmth of that. That's just personal taste. And then the drive. Gives it a nice hardness there. And then uh, lastly, the EQ. And if I sweep the EQ, you, you can kind of hear the difference in sound. So that there is the, our carrier signal. That's what the vocoder is going to respond to. As you can see in the vocoder area, I've got my audio from the carrier and I use post effects so that each effect is affecting the overall sound as well. So here what I've done was I, I set up a, a strong compressor. Uh, I got the ratio at 10 to 5. I got the attack up a little bit, about uh, almost 10, to 10 milliseconds. And the release I've got around 450 milliseconds. And it's 100% wet. Then I put in the vocoder. And afterwards, I add a, uh, a high pass filter. I duplicate the EQ. And I just have uh, the low EQ so I can control the lows, which I feel with a vocoder, getting strong lows can sound really good. And then I pump the sound up with uh, a limiter and a utility at the very end. This is the overall sound when I play something through it. So what I'm going to do is let me just copy a uh, some audio, an audio track. Here's the original sound that I've got here. And this I'm going to turn off this track here because we don't need the carrier signal actually playing through. In fact, I'm going to send this to uh, sends only. That'll take care of that. Check to the check to the check one two. Check to the check to the check one two. 
Okay, and that, that's my uh, stupid little voice. And the thing about it is uh, you don't want to do a voice that sounds like a robot. Don't try to make the robot voice when you're recording something. Just talk normally or, you know, try to have a hard sounding voice, you know, like, like an announcer would or something like that. So that's the dry sound. Check to the check to the check. One, two. Let me just uh, play this here real quick. So I just have one note playing here. And usually if your carrier signal is strong enough, one note is uh, sometimes going to sound best. And this is what the sound will sound like uh, when it's completely vocoded. And I can turn off this clip here and just play in live if I want. So that's got a nice solid voice with a lot of grit to it, which I, I like. And then I can mess with the carrier. So I'm going to just go back to playing from the carrier here. And if I mess with the carrier, we can change the tone of the sound. So all kinds of fun stuff that we can do with these uh, macros that are set up. And then with the vocoder, I've got macros set up here as well. So I've got the low boost. Really gives a lot of bottom end punch. Got the wet dry so you could hear some of the original if, if you want. Formant shift. Envelope depth. Uh, gate threshold. This is actually really cool. As it cuts out the gate, you you can uh, really transform what the sound is. So. So that's really cool. Uh, filter bandwidth. So this uh, this filter band here is this will cut out the lows, and this one here will cut out the highs. So. So a whole lot to play with there, uh, all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to make this here available for free so you can play with this setup and use it. All you're going to need to do is uh, drag it into uh, a certain place on your hard drive instead of in the presets. So you could drag it in. There you go. Carry your project. And you can rename it whatever you want. But yeah, that's all you do. And then you'll be able to have access to this anytime. Basically, you just will grab this into your song, drag it in. And it's not going to have the clips. I'll get rid of the clips and everything. So you can, um, you know, work on your own stuff. All right. So I hope that gives you a, a cool little walkthrough of a vocoder.